Good morning. This morning we celebrate the epiphany of our Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, under whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthy magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord, have mercy upon us, and break both these thy laws in our hearts. We beseech thee. Glory to God in the highest, and in earth peace, good will towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only God and Son of Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sin of the world, Receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of the God the Father, have, have mercy upon us. For thou, thou only art holy, thou, thou only art the Lord, thou, thou only, O Christ, Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Eternal God, who by a star led wise men to the worship of your Son, guide by your light the nations of the earth that the whole world may know your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. <laughs> the first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, beginning at the first verse. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephra. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The song for this morning is Psalm 72, verses 1 to 7, 10 to 14. The refrain is, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace 
until the moon shall be no more. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. Kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence, and dear their blood shall be in his sight. Lord, Lord every nation on earth will adore you. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter, one, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. As I wrote above in a few words, reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as, as it has now been revealed to its holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Lord be with you. And also with you. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, Lord to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, 
until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Joy. 
and giving purpose to our own journey of faith today. Apart from scripture, Lazarus grew up and one in particular endured. Eventually, author Henry Van Dyke wrote a story called The Other Wise Man. You may know it by its more recent title, The Fourth Wise Man. The fourth wise man's name was Arvadan, so the story goes. He was with the others when they discovered the star. Unlike his companions, Arvadan was disorganized and scattered. Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar did not want to take them along on the quest, but finally agreed. They sent him off to make his arrangements with, the, with clear understanding that they would wait three days and then set out without him if necessary. Artaban rushed out and he bought three jewels as additional gifts for the child. A sapphire, a ruby, and a pearl. True to character, he missed the deadline, but decided to set out on his own because he said, I have the strangest feeling that if I follow the star, I shall find not only a king, but the secret of life. On the third day out, the terrain became very rugged and unfriendly to travelers. Our band heard moaning and cries for help off to the side of the road. He found an injured man, the victim of a robbery. In spite of the delay to his journey, he took the victim to a nearby village, going door to door looking for someone to take the man in. He was rejected everywhere until he eventually offered the sapphire to a woman in exchange for her promise to care for the man. Arban continued his journey for months on end until the star stopped over a village. Convinced he would find the child there, he knocked at the door of a house when he heard a baby crying inside. A woman opened the door and let him inside when she realized he was not a Roman soldier. She took a total Arban about the birth of Jesus but she also told him that Herod had ordered the death of all male children two years and younger. She was frantic to save her son. There was a commotion outside and a banging on the door. And as the husband and wife tried to hide their child, Artaban opened the door to a Roman officer. He brought the man with the ruby, and the child went unharmed. Artaban now had only one gift left for the Messiah as he set out again. Weeks turned into months, and months into years, as he traveled the world without encountering the child or the man that he must, that he must now be. Eventually, when Artaban was an old man, he arrived in Jerusalem. It was festival time, but in the midst of the celebration, he was appalled to see a young girl standing in the marketplace with her hands tied behind her back. She was about to be sold into slavery. Artaban offered his father to give the pearl to the slave trader and set the girl free. In the next moment, Artaban was forced to step back to let an angry mob pass. In their midst was a man wearing a crown of thorns and dragging a cross. Artaban knew for certain this was the king he had been seeking. He sadly muttered that his whole life had been wasted. A woman, overhearing him, perhaps out of compassion, asked to hear the story of Artaban's journey. When it was finished, she kept silent for a while. Finally, she said, nothing is more valuable than a man's health, a child's life, a woman's freedom. I think that in searching for the Messiah, you have found the secret of life. The wise men of the gospel story this morning followed a star. They had no idea where it would lead. They traveled a long way in the darkness, trusting the star's light, and they ended up not in the palace of the king, but in a small hut, worshipping a child. They offered gifts that recognized Jesus' kingship, his divinity, and his eventual sacrifice for the healing of the world. Arvadan 
and the legend of the other wise men set out on a journey, the same journey as his colleagues prepared to have his life changed. He experienced the gospel, gospel lessons of true kingship and the power of God to work in the world. The king shall say to those on his right, Come, you blessed of my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. In this parish, and in this diocese, we closed out the calendar year 2020, year A, in the order of the church, with those same words in witness to the wider world as we celebrate the God who calls us in our weakness to make the light of Christ visible to the entire world. In the years 2020, 2021, God has called you, the parish of St. Paul's Lindsay, on a journey, much like that of Magi, a journey that will sometimes lead you into uncertainty and doubt, but always into wholeness. You are being gifted with a new vision for ministry and a new understanding of who you are as you share with each other your experience and your wisdom in order to make sense of it all. You have God's love within, within you and God's spirit leading you as a community and as individuals supported by that community. We have much to be grateful for and it seems to me this community has been offered a vision to ground your search for your future in ministry with the new incumbent among you. May God bless you, that person, and all of you together in God's service. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray with response to the petitions, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. We pray for Linda, our private, and our Metropolitan, our Bishops Andrew and Rosilla, our Interim Priest Canon Gloria, and Honorary Assistant Canon Greg, our youth leader, Dan, our administration team here at St. Paul's. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority, especially in this land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For good weather, for abundant harvest, for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and for the suffering, especially those whom you carry in your hearts and continue to offer in your prayers. For prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died, remembering our loved ones in this special season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Remembering St. Paul and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To be you, O Lord. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt hear their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. For thou, Father, art good and loving, and we glorify thee through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also and with you. Spirit. Gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people join in praise and thanksgiving, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet to right so to you. It is very meet, right, and abound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, 
creator and preserver of all things. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in substance of our mortal flesh manifested forth his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Father, our Heavenly Father, who at thy tender mercy does give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a, perfect, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, the remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, to make before thee this sacrifice, the sacrament of the holy blood of eternal life, the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord and our God. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be filled with the grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O Lord trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold of great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious God, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and be in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us in thy peace.
pray. God of all the nations, who you guide us with the light of, the, of, of your light, help us to recognize Christ as he comes to us in the secret, as we know in our natures. May we go out in the name of love, for he is this Lord, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power will be in us, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church that should be Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us depart in peace in the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.